So here's the granola section, and as we mentioned, you know, granolas these days can be pretty high in added oils and fats, added salts, and even added sugars. And in fact, if we look close at some of these, we'll, we'll see just that. Here's, uh, you know, we'll just randomly, again, pull one just for educational purposes, and we see this is almost 50% um, fat, and the sugars are, you know, there's 11 grams, 40, so times by four is 44 calories. So that's almost one fifth of the calories are coming from sugar. And when we look, it's not even whole grains. And we have added sugars, we have white rice um, and uh, refined corn flour, we have added oils. So, you know, they're not really the health food that we once knew them to be back in the 60s and 70s. There is one company that makes a product that really does meet the guidelines, and that is Food for Life. And Food for Life makes these four granolas, an original cinnamon raisin, almonds, and golden flax. And if we put these to the test, we'll see that they make their guidelines. First, it's all whole grains. We have whole grain wheat. We have uh, whole grain barley, we have whole grain millet, we have whole lentils, whole soybeans, and whole grain spelt. Now there is a little sweetener in the form of malted barley, but when we look, there isn't even enough for it to qualify for a gram. So we know it's contributing a very small amount. And even if it was a gram of sugars, that would be four calories out of 190. So that would be down around 2 or 3 percent of the, it would be very low, so it's insignificant. And as we can see, it's low in fat. The sodium is very close to the one-to-one. -one. Some of these make the one-to-one, -one. some of them are just over the one-to-one. -one. This is 190 to 200, so close enough in my book. And it's uh, very low in sugars. So we have original, we have cinnamon raisin. Now this one appears to be a little higher in sugar, but that's because of the added raisins. That's where the sugars are coming from because there's no other added sugar other than the little bit of malted barley. There's the almond, and this one actually is less than the one-to-one -one on the sodium, 200 calories to 190. And there's the golden flax, which again, zero on the sugars. The sodium is just over the one-to-one, -one, and it's low in fat, just over 10%. So sitting in the midst of all of this, we find four varieties from one company that actually make a good option. So now we're in the uh, section of the non-dairy milks. And, you know, there's good news and bad news. The good news is that, you know, I remember years ago where maybe you were able to find one or two varieties or options. And today, as we can see, we have almost, uh, it's almost like a 12-foot section. And we have everything from hemp milk and rice milk and oat milk and almond milk and all kinds of varieties and rice milk. But, so that's the good news. The bad news, though, is that many of them now have come, come with you know added sugars, lots of salt, oils, and some of them really just don't cut the mustard as they say. So you know from my perspective, non-dairy milks are a better substitute for dairy milks, but they're still not a food. We don't look at them as a food. I like to think of them as a condiment, and that really puts them in perspective. <laughs>